Hello everyone, Eclectic Sapphire here. Um, today I wanted to talk about wigs because I have a lot of them, but they don't always look the best depending on the color of the wig and the color of your skin tone. So we're going to talk about how to make it work today. The first thing we need to discuss is what I even mean by matching your skin tone to the tone of the wig or the hair color you might be trying to pull off. So we have hot colors and cold colors, right? Hot being like fire, red, orange, yellow, and then cool colors being blue, purple, green. But that blue and that orange are really the opposing colors on the color wheel. Keep the color wheel in mind for anything about hair. Um, it will help you so you cancel out colors you don't want. And that's what we're going to talk about today later. But with skin tones, you can have a cool tone to your skin or a warm tone to your skin or be somewhere kind of neutral. I am lucky in that I'm mostly neutral, but I lean to the cool side. Um, cool toned skin has pinker undertones, whereas warm toned skin is going to have more yellow, bronzy, olive type skin tone. And one way you can check um, is if your skin is thin enough and light enough to look, you can do a vein test. So either at your wrist, your um, elbow, or even the front of my um, <laughs> front of my shoulders, you can tell pretty easily where my veins are. But if you look at your veins and they're mostly blue or even purple, then you have more of a cool skin tone. But if they show more green, that means you're picking up some yellow tones in your skin, and that means you're more on the warm side. Another check for people who have a darker tone to their skin, or you just can't see your veins maybe. Um, you can also do the jewelry trick. If you tend to wear silver and think that looks best on you, then you probably have more of a, school, a cool skin tone. But if you like gold and it looks great on you, then you probably have more of a warm skin tone. So there are multiple ways to try to figure it out. Often, like my hair is an ash blonde naturally, which is more cool. It suits me. Cool colors suit me because like goes well with like. That's what we're getting at here. If you have a cool skin tone, then cooler, ashier, blue-toned colors, purple-toned colors are going to look good on you. Whereas if you're warm skin tone, warmer bronze, orangey, you know, vibrant red are going to look best on you. So when you're looking to pick a wig for whatever character you're wanting to cosplay, Keep that in mind. You can start out and not have to worry about the rest of this video. If you can find a wig that is the right tone of whatever color you're looking for to suit your skin tone. Because if you're looking for a red wig, you can choose a nice ginger orangey color that's going to suit a warmer skin tone. Or you can go slightly more on the burgundy side, pick up some of those auburn tones, some more purpley tones. And it'll really look great against a cooler skin tone. So you can shift that. You don't have to match the character exactly, but if you're looking for a red wig, pick one that's going to look great on you. That way you don't have to worry about it in the future. So the whole concept of this video really came about because I was asked to do a project where I would portray Anna Kravinoff, or Craven the Hunter's daughter, and she has short blonde hair in some of the later drawings of her, more mature um, version of her. And I found an amazing wig on Poshmark for really cheap, but it came in and was very, very blonde, or very yellow tone, really an unnatural yellow. Um, and there are a couple of options of what to do with it. The first thing to try to do, try to change the wig. If you can tone your hair, you can tone a wig, you just have to keep in mind it's a different type of material than hair, unless it's a human hair wig. Then you can use normal hair dyes. But with most of the wigs we use in cosplay, they're synthetic fibers. They're plastic. So you got to use something that is meant to dye plastic-based materials. RIT does have a synthetic dye line called, I think, Dye More. And you can get purple is the opposite of yellow, which is what I'm trying to cancel out some here and make it ashier, look a little closer to my tone of hair so it looks good against my skin. Um, so grab a bottle of Purple Rit dye, some isopropyl alcohol, 90%, one of the small bottles, cap full of the Rit dye, 
the full bottle of alcohol, mix that around in a gallon plastic bag that you can close real well, and then put the wig in there, get it coated with some air in there, then squish it, get rid of some of the air, and let it marinate. You can move it around every few minutes, but 10-15 minutes, maybe longer, just keep an eye on it. Um, it'll look scary, but most of it washes out because this is plastic. You're trying to dye plastic. Um, most of it's not going to keep. I did a couple of pieces. The one I needed to tone, it didn't really take. Some of the bang pieces that I was trying to get to match my natural hair color better, those took decently well and came out a little ashier than when they went in. This did not. So I had to go to trick number two. So let me get the wig on real quick. I love these uh, stocking caps that have the hole in them. That's what comes with most cheap wigs now, but you can do it like this. If you're going to be, you know, dancing or something, you'll probably want to make it more secure than what I'm about to do. But this gets a lot of hair out of the way pretty quickly. So I part it about halfway, can be messy, and then pull the wig cap through because with this hole, you can kind of zhuzh it around until it lays mostly flat. See, like right now, I've got a little too much weight over here on my right side. But you can rearrange that until it kind of goes down. And then all that hair that was on my head is now pretty well situated underneath that wig cap. But see what I mean? This is very, very wrong tone for me. Someone with a warmer skin tone could probably rock this more easily. But it is a very unnatural yellow also. Um, but we're going to change locations to where I have a mirror and talk about options for how to make this work a little better if you can't change the color of the wig. So now that we're in my poorly lit bathroom that probably echoes, apologies, um, we're gonna talk about makeup. So, some amazing things that you can make use of. Bronzer, what type of blush you use. Since I know I have relatively cool skin, my hair color is on the cool side, my eye color is on the cool side, that's what I tend to use for my everyday makeup. Um, I use a, you know, I use Bare Minerals, but it's a nice pink tone to my blush. Um, lipsticks, I tend to use berries and more purpley toned things, but wearing hair like this, I would probably shift that just a smidge. I would instead use a warmer lipstick that's got more of a rust color to it. So let's go ahead and get that going a little bit now. So bring a little more warmth. All I've got on right now is some base and I did have mascara on, but now I don't. So I'll come back with a full face of makeup and we'll talk about what I did. After fixing the lips a little bit, putting on some eyeliner, doing some very subtle, you know, neutral eyeshadow, um, it looks better. I might tend to use the lighter more neutral tone, but I instead went for these more red tones today because I was trying to pull in a little bit more warmth, um, which when I take this wig off, my makeup will probably not look quite right because it won't suit the hair color that's then next to it. If you've ever had a hair color from a salon or out of the box that's just slightly off, you've probably experienced this where natural you know, natural face or natural makeup that you normally do just doesn't quite look right. So you have to play with you know, maybe you do a green eyeshadow or something and play around with your makeup some. Um, but this is by far one of the best purchases I've ever made on Amazon, I know, but one of the best purchases. It's called the Color Board by Beauty Glazed. I think they're like 15, 16 bucks, but they are color palettes on boards. So you've got green, orange, blue, and purple. There are glitters, there are neutrals, there's a yellow on each board that goes with, so this green is a bit more vibrant. Ah, I got blue all under my fingernails. Um, but the one that's on the blue is very much a cool yellow, um, which is a thing that can exist, you know, and there's neutrals on each board that complement them. 
So give me a moment while I wash my fingers. But the last thing that you cannot forget is your eyebrows. With this, because I am naturally blonde and this hair is blonde, there's not much I can do except for maybe take some of this bright yellow into the thickest part of my brow to try to, you know, pull these colors together. So, you know, it's not going to make much of a difference because my eyebrow hair is darker than the color I'm putting on it. But if I can just tone it to be a little more golden yellow than the more ashy yellow that it naturally is, hey, it's something. But the real trick is when you're wearing red or a black wig and you have a lighter color of eyebrow than that, um, you might want to grab a palette like this, which thank you to my wonderful follower that sent this to me from my wish list. Um, it's a small called Lamora Matte Nudes palette, and I will link that in the description as well. But it is a nice palette that I intend to use for eyebrows when I need to swap wigs out because it's got some nice red tones, a warm one and a cool one. It's got some grays for when I'm wearing a black wig. It's got a variety of browns and a lot of neutral toned blondes as well. Though again, unless I completely white, eye, white out to my eyebrows with like a, a heavier duty material than just eyeshadow, and then I can go over them with fun colors that are lighter than the hairs are. But something like this is super helpful if you change out wigs multiple times in one you know, con or just one day at a con. It's, it's small, it's a nice palette of neutrals, it goes on pretty well, and it serves its purpose for me and it was like 15 bucks as well. Um, so all the makeup will be linked that I can still find links to. But that's kind of the trick. If you find a wig that doesn't match your skin tone, you can try to alter the wig a little bit by toning it. If that fails, which this one did, you can bring in some of the same color or same tone of color. So if it's a very warm wig, bring in some more bronzy tones to your makeup that day. Um, subtle. It will look weird if you go overboard because your skin tone's still your skin tone underneath. But you can, you know, use a peachier blush as opposed to the cooler blush or vice versa. Use a different lipstick than you normally would that just verges a little more towards the warm or the cool, whatever you're needing to match the wig you're wearing on your head that day. And then do not forget eyebrows are important. Make sure to take a look at the eyebrows. If you're wearing a crazy color wig, you, you don't have to worry about it as much, but if it's trying to look like a natural hair color, pay attention that the eyebrows go with it. They shouldn't match. Most of the time the hair on the head does not match the eyebrows. There are a few shades off most of the time, but they're in the same color family often. So keep an eye on that and you'll have a much better time with feeling like your wig looks okay on you. P.S. <laughs> on the eyebrows, make sure you seal them. Um, I'm currently using the Benefit 24 hour eyebrow setter. It's a clear setter. So if you put blue on your eyebrows, it won't over, you know, it won't go over that and change it any. It's just a little kind of like a mascara brush and you just seal over that color. That way you don't get eyeshadow blurring all over the place out of your eyebrows. So don't forget that bit as well. And then also, please remember to like and subscribe. See you next time.